I get it, for decades we've been committed to putting everything inside of a spreadsheet, although we've really ended up using spreadsheets not necessarily for number calculations, which is really what a spreadsheet is designed to do, but really as a data structure or an alternative to a database. And then we started building in graphics. And today we're gonna to go over some of the gotchas as we move from an Excel environment into a Power BI environment. So stay tuned, we'll jump right to it. So the reality is that Power BI is an extremely powerful engine. And notice here, I'm using the same data that I have here within this environment. It's the exact same data set. So, but I can see it and you can see I'm only looking at this column and this column, I think. this this column and this column, I think. But I'm just looking at a few columns, but I can add as many columns as I want uh, to this table in here so that I can see. But the key, the key takeaway here is that everything you see here is, dr is driven from this data. So if you're still doing this, you're probably working way too hard. And the challenge is, for example, within this environment, I don't have a lot of the drill down. I can't see, yeah, I've got a count, but I can't really see who my high risk people are without going through and sorting the data, right? I can do that. But for many people, what they'll do is they'll put these graphics right here and this summary up at the top of their list. So then they kind of dork themselves up. They make sorting very difficult. So it's really kind of a, uh, not a real sustainable model, so it's time to move on. And those tools are available to us today in the product called Power BI. And as you can see here, I have the same data. The data, by the way, can still be updated within Excel if you want to and have it synchronized into this data list here where you see the data here. But here, I can have my graphic, I can update my data, but more importantly, I can say, hey, show me who all the pendings are, boom. And it shows me, and I can take with that data and export just that data. So if I'm talking to somebody and they say, hey, hey, look, who are your, your expected ends? I can go through quickly. I can click on this report. I can go, boom, I can export it and it'll automatically export the data as an Excel spreadsheet and I can send it to the person without sending them all of my data. I can send them anything I want. I can do the same thing by doing a search here for that data. And here it is right here. Or instead, I can also say, hey, I just wanna select all the highs. Boom, I can do that. And I can also see it in a, in a, um, in a pull down right here. So this is a drop down. And I can see it here as just a list. So now when I click on expected end, notice my high end count goes to zero, but here I have everything else represented. So you can see how it's all very point and click, very simple to use. Now let's take, let's dig into this just a little bit. Here's a counter that I put in the environment and it's right here. And you can see that high end count. And here's what they call DAX. But here is the data. So I just basically said, hey, give me a variable called high end count and count it with this. Now, for those of you that use Excel um, heavily, you'll notice that these formulas are very, very similar. Now I'm not doing a count if, but they're very similar. So you can translate immediately the items that you're doing within within Excel and move them directly into Power BI as well. So the transition into this environment shouldn't be as complex for you because you can see all of the data and it's very similar to the way it's done within DAX or Power BI. So we can create as many as these wants and just as many as we want. And this plus zero here, by the way, is, is a simple trick. Uh, that you'll get from this video. So that if here, if I hit expected end, I sort down, I get this ugly thing that says blank because there's nothing in high end count. Well, there's not supposed to be because I selected, I expected expected end. But so to get rid of that, um, I just put in the plus zero. So it, 
it won't ever show that blank. You'll, you know, if, if it doesn't see anything in the filter, it's just gonna add zero. So easy way to take care of that problem. So, so that's it. So are you thinking about migrating from a spreadsheet? That's a good time to do it. To get this data ready for Power BI, we would erase all of this information, use this spreadsheet, convert this, format it into a table, and then we would suck it into Power BI as a data source and see other videos to help you with that.